Punt team is on as this is sent away. This is taken at the 15. Just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards. Melbourne ready to go again on offense. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not have the balls go through goalposts. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Out of the gun, Smith. And that's complete ETN out of the backfield. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. I really like the angles that the tackles came from on that play. They secured inside, took away the cutback. The sideline's there, so you can only go so far outside. And they were able to close in and tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they use your boy over there, the 12th man. Sammy Sideline, right? Sammy Sideline. You know something? He tackles pretty well, too. He's tougher than an airport state. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Boy, that ball's just hanging up there, waiting to be intercepted. That looked doomed from the start. But they took the deep shot anyway, and fortunately, it winds up incomplete. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. Devon A. Chan in the offense ready to go once again. Whatever he was doing in September, they're hoping that that carries over now to October because he was sensational last month. He absolutely was, and we all know where it started at the end of last season. Right? All the offseason preparation, the weight workouts, the sprints, right? The vision that he had, what he was going to do this season. And of course, it all came together with the rest of the team. Those big fellas up front, leverage, and boy, are they getting downfield and creating extra blocks for them. They really are. Everyone's been doing their job so far to create those holes. Now a pass caught by Zay Jones. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. Operating from the gun, Goldman, he finds his man, complete, that's Pierce. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Jones has it. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Out of the gun, here's a give to Achan. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. 60 yards rushing for him now to this point. Here's second and three. Looking to throw. Goldman over the middle complete. It's Carter. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him the first down. Back to throw, Goldman. The left side completion to Jones. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll make it second down. Brings up second and four at the 19-yard line. Looking to throw, Goldman. He finds the tight end harbor, complete. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Back to throw again. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. On second down, a run by HM. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. Meanwhile, on third down, they 
take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. McPherson's kick is good. And the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's 24-3. So everything else has gone right in this first half. Kind of follows that it would for their kicker, too, as he adds three more onto the lead. Yeah, and the way that this one's gone, definitely not looking like he's going to have to worry too much about pressure kicks late in the game. He can go out there free and easy, just work on his form, and he knocked that one through. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Melbourne ready to go again on offense. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and ten. Now ETN to start the drive. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. To throw on second down is Smith. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And they rattle off a big one. 49 yards. Uh, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there. That shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Straight ahead, ETN. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot, he had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Throwing now is Gino. And he's going to be dropped. Back at the 15-yard line. Javon Kinlaw. Forced his way through, drops him for a loss of 10 yards. First and goal looked like things were set up nicely, and now all of a sudden on second and goal, Charles, a big challenge ahead of them. And you have to know when you're this close to the goal line, things are going to happen faster, so you've got to get the ball out quick. Not going to have much time in the pocket before the defenders bring pressure. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. ETN up the middle. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. 44 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. This offense so far on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and goal. Yeah, will get this out to the flat for ETN. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now Lutz for the field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by Lutz is good, and the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. That drive took him inside to 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Devon A. Chan in the offense, ready to go once again. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. And he's got Pierce. Loose inside the 30. Inside the 10. Touchdown, Chicago. Alec Pierce with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Bulls continue to pull away here in this first half. 
What a first half he is compiling here. He's already over 100 yards receiving and now two touchdowns, CD. Brandon, you know I don't like to play the game where you start projecting when you're at a certain point. But let's face it, he's off to a tremendous start. So 200 yards, four touchdowns. I don't think anything's out of the question right now. He's blowing up coverages. You've got to double him every snap. Otherwise, he's going to defeat you on almost every play. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Melbourne ready to go again on offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Second and five. Brings up second and five at the 29 yard line. From the gun, here's Smith. A short throw caught by Andrews. So give him two yards there on the completion. And now it's third and three. A two-yard gain on the play. And it's third down. They'll run with ETN. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Here's Smith. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. On second down, a run with ETN. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Throwing on third down, Smith. And that is incomplete. The touch and time man critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. And they bring their punter out there now as he's on to kick it away. This is taken at the 23. So a change of possession here on the punt. Devon A. Chan of the offense ready to go once again. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. And they'll give this day a chance. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. 46 on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. Fielded at the 20. Melbourne ready to go again on offense. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Yet again, targeting and fighting Mark Andrews. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now a first down throw, it's Smith. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. It's now second and ten. Throwing is Smith. A short throw caught by Andrews. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. 
oftentimes now offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just help receivers find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air. Nice chunk of yardage there. And it's caught. Touchdown. Amon Ross St. Brown. As the first half is winding down. And the Elks are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close. And then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you. Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Lutz good on the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down to 18. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he's not going to go anywhere as they get him down behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get... Well, we'll move right through the break then, skipping halftime and back to the field for the start of the second half. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And this offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. Well, they look up at the scoreboard facing that deficit. A three-score game, Charles, but look, there's plenty of time to go here. The old football cliche that comes to my mind is you can't get it all back at once. They probably need something, though, out of this drive, at least three points. Are you trying to say that there's no three-score drive on that play sheet for any of those coordinators? They just don't have it, right? You're trying to get it all back. You know you can't get it back in one drive, but maybe cut into it a little bit, as you just suggested. Try and create a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a spark, and then maybe that'll carry over. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Here's a give to Etienne. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Holding offense. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. And this is incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. On second down, here's Smith. And this is into the hands of Andrews downfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 26 and a first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he's brought down, but not before a really nice stiff arm to create a little space. 57 yards rushing for him now to this point. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. On first down, Smith. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Gino out of throw. 
He'll drop this one off with ETN. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Gino. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. The kick by Lutz is good, and that'll get the deficit down to 15. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing. All right, they didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need him to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Here's A-Chan to start the drive. Nifty move. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they work this well up field across the 45. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Once he broke through that first wave of defenders, there was a pretty big gap there for him to run. And it helps that they were in a dime defense. That's six defensive backs. So this is why a lot of teams now are searching for those linebacker safety combo type guys. Can add a little bit more size on the defensive side of the ball, but can still run as well because when you run against six DBs, but it's a bigger offensive lineman, you often get this result. Now HN on first and ten. Flashed the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. Trey Greenlaw in there on the tackle. They work now on second and nine. Again, it's A-Chan. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So this drive maybe didn't end with the same kind of success they had in the first half, but they do add three to their lead. And defensively, I think they went in there at halftime and made a pact with each other and said, look, we can't let these guys keep driving it right down our throats. Not perfect giving up three, but a much better start than the way they played in the first half. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And now it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We've got a man shaking up. Hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Brought down by Willie Gay. From the 29, here's second and five. Now it's Smith. A short throw caught by Andrews. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. A handoff running left is ETN. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. First down, Elf. On first down, right back to ETN. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Nice satisfying run up first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Smith now to throw. Screenplay, here's ETN. 
And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Yeah, and on third down, you know those pass rushers, they're in the starter's block. They're just waiting for the pistol to fire. You can almost hear the defensive coaches on the sideline pre-snap. Watch the screen, watch the screen. Really good job there of identifying it and making the play to force fourth down. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Devon A. Chan in the offense, ready to go once again. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a bat. There he goes, right side. And he'll go down at the 28. A huge play there for Chicago. 52 yards. This play is a thing of beauty when it works as desired because they let the running back slip out of the backfield and head down the sideline on a wheel route. Number one, it's easy for him to get lost. And number two, really tough for the linebacker to run with him. And this ball's right on the money and leads to a big play. A give, running right, HM. A beautiful fake. And they'll have it in the red zone before it crosses over out of bounds. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. A-chan here, they stay on the ground. It was Jonathan Bostic there on the stop. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. They'll get that one to Carter complete. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll bring us to a third and four. Operating from the gun, Goldman. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. A 29-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So three more points tacked on, and this margin getting more comfortable by the minute. And with the lead where it is, you can actually feel good about field goals. We talk all the time about scoring sixes, not threes. But in this case, they're just looking to chew up some time and come away with points. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially. So a net gain of one there. The Melbourne ready to go again on offense. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Second and 10. Back to throw, Smith. Now that'll be caught by St. Brown. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Smith. And this almost intercepted. Not sure he saw the free safety that time. But lucky, incomplete, that'll bring up fourth down. So they bring out their putter as he's on for the fifth time here today. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. 
There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. 18 yards the gain for number 18. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild. And here's another completion for good yardage. So first and 10. And if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. A run straight ahead with HM. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. To throw on second down, Goldman. And incomplete. Well, the secondary has really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away. Turns into a nice play. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gets him the first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Throw right side complete to Carter. And he takes it inside the 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. They'll look to throw again. And this will be caught by his big wide receiver. Give him two yards. That sets him up first and goal. to throw again. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Deontay Johnson from six yards away as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. Well, to put it mildly, he's been able to dice up this secondary all game long, and this time, that and now, of course, all scoring plays are reviewed, and I think they're going to take an extra long look at this one. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 28. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Melbourne ready to go again on offense. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD, and if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, let's just say it's been unusual. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. And three yards to go. On third down, here's ETN. Now he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. But a good play is made on defense. Oftentimes, leverage is the key to everything. Defensive line not getting turned. All the other guys making sure they're in the right spot. And on that play, they were able to stop him short of a first down. And on now is the punter, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. This is brought in at the 21. 
42-yard punt, six on the return. And they will take over first and 10. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. Good drive last time, really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up? There he goes, left side! And he'll be out of bounds, just shy of the 40. And having built that kind of a lead, they're able to do whatever they want right now. All momentum on their side, especially now running the football. Yeah, you're talking about a defense being on their toes. They don't know what's going to hit them next at this point. No, they went from toes to heels, and they're trying to figure out how to get back to the toes part. Back now here on EA Sports. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. On first down, back to HM. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. They'll try and pick it up by running the action to the right. Stays on his feet. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Nice pickup. Ten yards and a first down on the keeper. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane, and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. Back to throw. Goldman. Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. The line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. Looking to throw. Goldman. And it's caught. Only able to pick up two, and that leads us to third and goal. H.N. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. There have not been a lot of great moments for this defense throughout this game. Finally, they have one they can hang their hat on. A nice stop there. On for the field goal now is Evan McPherson. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens, because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And Melbourne ready to go again on offense. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game has played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Well, that's not exactly how they drew that one up, nor practiced it, because on first down, you're trying to get some yardage to set up second and third down calls. In this case, had to drop it off to his running back. But boy, they closed quickly on that one and stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Throwing on third down, Smith able to find the open man. That's complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Smith. And this is going to be hauled in 
by the tight end Andrews. Another 18-yard gain. They had 18 on the previous snap as well. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And he's got this down to the 35. 11 more on that one and another first down. Again, we'll have it on the play. First down, L. To the air again, Smith. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Throwing now is Geno. He finds Bateman over the middle. His second catch, and this one not nearly as electrifying as his first. And it'll bring up third down now. And it's third down. Play action. It's Smith. Oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. Desmond King picks it. And the return just out across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Well, they've got the huge lead. Now they have another interception on the defensive side. Seems like everything they touch in this one, Charles, turns to gold. And they have to be awfully happy right there to get what appears to be one more for the road. It helps seal away one of their best efforts of the season. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. And the drive starts with a run from HM. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Brings up second and nine. He gets this one to Johnson. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it's third and four now. That's a game of five. Brings up third and four. Back to throw. Goldman. They'll swing this out wide. Here's HM. So they'll get nothing out of that play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards especially on third down yeah that one how about the defense figured that one out in a big way yeah they completed it all right and lost yardage it's a return of four following a 42 yard punt melbourne ready to go again on offense and they unfortunately are staring at a mini losing streak developing trailing here in the fourth quarter this would be their third straight defeat Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Geno out of throw. A quick throw there he is incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Smith. And that incomplete nearly intercepted. And remember, he had his hands on one earlier, had one pick. It could have been his second, but instead it's fourth down. They snap it to Smith. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with the football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. A big time sack there on fourth down. And the ball will go over on downs on the short side of the field. Well, the D brought the house. They called the blitz and they get to the quarterback overwhelming the O-line. And I would love to know, and we'll find out later on, was that called before the play? Or did they audible into it? Because defenses change plays as well as offenses. Sometimes they get the set they want. They go right to the blitz. And in this case, they nailed it. Got right to the quarterback. No chance on that fourth down. Throwing to start the drive. Goldman. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Quiddy Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. I wonder if they're wandering back to the huddle thinking to themselves, can we just hit rewind and go back a play? Definitely not the down they wanted to begin this drive by giving up a sack, but for the defense, that's exactly how they drew it up. 
So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Up the middle, A-chan. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Third and 19. A-chan gets it from the gun. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. This defense not budging back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. Operating from the gun, Goldman. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with a football. A fourth down pass play doesn't work out. And as a result, possession switches hands. So they were really trying to put the nail in the coffin there already with this lead here in the fourth, but they didn't get it. Guaranteed, it's not going to be a fun handshake in the postgame, right? <laughs> you just know that there's going to be some bad blood there. And I know if we go to the postgame press conferences, the, the winning coach, you know what he's going to say, why he did it? We need the points, okay? Because you never know at the end of the year if points are going to come into the tiebreaker if we're trying to get into the playoffs. That's always the standard justification. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now Gino. And that'll be caught. It's St. Brown. And what a big time play there, 49 yards. So now following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Etienne up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The defense showing some anger after giving up the big play. This time they'll lose one or two. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Smith now to throw. Got his tight end. That's complete. That's Willis. So the completion good for seven there. And now we've got a third and four. to throw with Smith. And it's caught. Touchdown. LaVisca Chennault from four yards out. And the Elks get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Lutz will look to add the extra point. And the lead is down to 24. Five plays there on that drive. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And they've got it. They recovered it. They hang on now, though. There's a penalty flag down. Well, CD, you understand. I mean, they're so eager trying to get back in this game here in the fourth quarter, but they touched that one a little too early before it went 10 yards. Brandon, in such a high-stakes scenario, everyone's feeling the pressure on this play. The special teams coordinator, which one is he going to pick in terms of kicks? Can the kicker execute it? Can the team wait for 10 yards? So many variables, and in this case, they didn't get it done. Second down and six now. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. And they'll give this day chance. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? That is caught, and they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. That'll put him at 77 yards receiving for the ball game. It's a first down. Well, normally, you might say, start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter. But the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack. But you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game. And trusting this quarterback, 
I think he continued to do so. And he's got a first down following a pickup of about 13 as we will take a pause here for the two-minute warning. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Brandon, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about running them into submission, uh, hasn't he? You took... And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. Some good running there at the end of the drive. He had the burst that set up the first and goal, and then one play later, he's in the end zone. Brandon, what I liked about that sequence is I'm not sure who made the play call, but they understood the situation, understood the momentum. A nice hard-charging run, give it right back to him and let him cap things off. McPherson on for the point after. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So the drive there took six plays. And it was Devon Achan who finished things off with a touchdown reception. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Melbourne ready to go again on offense. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. A partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Now it's Smith. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. It's a gain of 17 yards. And on Melbourne, first down. Smith. And that's complete ETN out of the backfield. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Now, despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Smith. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him, one of the most accurate guys in the league, totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. But sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. This will be fielded at the 17. And Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into this offense? They certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. So for Chicago, they boost their record up to a strong 4-1, and one, and they will hit the road next week. Meanwhile, for Melbourne, they'll fall to 1-4 and four with a loss, and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.